I'm Arvind Vora, and I've been teaching speed reading for the last 10 years. I developed my own speed reading approach called rapid analytical reading. And here's the difference between rapid analytical reading and regular methods of speed reading. Most methods of speed reading are appropriate really only for very simple texts, newspapers, very simple novels, very simple nonfiction. My method, rapid analytical reading, is actually designed to be used for advanced and complex texts. I use rapid analytical reading myself to get perfect scores in both the GMAT and the GRE. I finished the GMAT an hour and 20 minutes early, and I finished the GRE an hour and 45 minutes early. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to the basic ideas of speed reading, starting with very classical ideas such as the Evelyn Woods method of speed reading, and then we're going to move on towards real rapid analytical reading. Through this video, you're not going to know how to speed read perfectly by the end of this video. What you'll have, though, is a roadmap of what to do for the next several months to develop the skill of speed reading and then the skill of rapid analytical reading. Usually when people talk about speed reading, they pretend that there's a trade-off between speed and comprehension. The idea is that if you increase your speed, you're going to have a slight decrease in comprehension. And a lot of speed reading courses will talk about things like that, talking about uh, how fast you can read at 90% comprehension, or at 80% comprehension, or at even 70% comprehension. Now to me, that concept is ridiculous. Because if you're reading at even 90% comprehension very, very quickly, all you're doing is more quickly missing the point of what you're reading. You're just doing the wrong thing faster. It's like if you're lost and you start driving faster, that doesn't make you, you know, get to your destination. It just makes you more lost. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this idea that there's a trade-off between speed and comprehension. I want to neutralize this idea for good that says that if you read faster, you're going to understand less, and if you read slower, you're going to understand more. I'm going to read a short passage out of this book. This is my book, Lies, Damn Lies, and College Admissions. And I'm going to show you that maybe reading slowly or reading more slowly does not actually help you understand anything better. I could read this sentence here, but, by, my. Second. See, if I read like that, by the time I get to the end of the sentence, you'll have forgotten the beginning of the sentence. So slowing down does not necessarily mean that you understand more. In fact, we could make it even slower. B-U-T space, B-Y space, M-Y space, S-E-C-O-N-D space, S-E-M-E-S-T-E-R space. You see, by slowing down, we're not actually helping the comprehension. In fact, we're making the comprehension more difficult. This is something you've probably already experienced when you're reading more complicated texts where the sentences and paragraphs tend to be a lot longer. You probably had this feeling that by the time you get even to the end of a sentence, you forgot what the sentence is about. Or by the time you get to the end of a paragraph or a page, you forgot what you're reading at the beginning. You see, if you were reading it faster, you wouldn't have that time window to forget. So there's not really always a trade-off between speed and comprehension. And you're going to see in, this, in, the, in the methods that we're going to talk about, the rapid analytical reading methods, how that trade-off between speed and comprehension doesn't really exist. Before we get into that, though, I want to talk a little bit about the real, the most important of biological and psychological aspects, the real underpinnings of speed reading and of rapid analytical reading. And for that, I'm going to have you do an exercise. So first, you're going to take a piece of paper, and you're going to draw two dots on the piece of paper. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cover up one eye, and you're going to look at the diagonally opposite dot. You're not going to look at the dot that's right in front of the eye. You're going to look diagonal to the a diagonal dot. You're going to cover up one eye, and you're going to slowly move the paper back and forth. And you're going to find a certain spot where one of the dots seems to vanish off the page. It looks like there's like now a blank page instead of an actual dot on the page. Now the Neurological or the biological reason why that is is not anything super complicated. It's just that in your eye, there's a place where the optic nerve connects the retina, and at that specific spot, 
There are no photoreceptors, and those are the, the receptors in the eye that, that receive light. So at those specific points in your eye, no information is coming in. But the real question is this, then why don't you just see a, a blank space everywhere you look? Over here, you didn't see nothing. You saw, it seemed like as if the paper had actually been filled in. It looked like where that dot was. It wasn't an empty space, it was actually continuous white paper. Well, why is that? I mean, we can see what the brain did is it kind of assumed that what was happening in that empty space was kind of the same as what was going on around it. But how did that make us actually see it? Let's take this mystery a second level. If you have an inner ear infection, what often happens to people with inner ear infections, and the inner ear is the part of the brain, or sorry, is the part of the body that, that controls balance and coordination. So if your inner ear is off, your, your sense of balance is thrown off. What happens often is people, it'll, it'll look to the person who has this infection that the room is physically spinning. Now, it un we can understand why it feels like the room is spinning, but why does it look like the room is spinning? How does the inner ear affect what we see? We see how it affects what we feel, but how does it affect what we see? I want to do a thought experiment with you. Imagine for a second that since birth, you wore special goggles. Since the day you were born, you wore these special goggles. And what these goggles did is they would take in whatever you were looking at and kind of create a cartoon version of the thing that you're looking at. So for example, if you look at a chair, you would only see like a cartoon version of that chair. You wouldn't see the object, you'd just see a cartoon of it. If you looked at a fork, you'd see a cartoon version of the fork. If you looked at a dog, you would see a cartoon dog. You would never say if you saw a car this cartoon dog, oh, there's a cartoon version of a dog. Because to you, that's just what a dog looks like. You'd say, there's a dog. The only experience you ever have of life would be the cartoon. So you would assume that that cartoon was reality. What's interesting is that in your brain right now, that's kind of what happens. Information comes in from your eyes. It comes in from your inner ear. Then it gets processed by your brain to create kind of a cartoon of what you're actually seeing. And what we see is that cartoon. We don't see the actual things that they actually are. We see a processed version of it. So what does that have to do with reading? Well, one of the things that we're going to talk about in reading, and you've probably already heard about in speed reading, is that you need to, what they say, you need to expand your visual field. In other words, right now, you probably only look at one word at a time. And in, the, in speed reading, you start to look at two words or three words or even four words or even an entire line of text at a, at a time. And what people say is that in order to be able to do that, you need to expand your visual field. Some people even say that you need to use your peripheral vision, but that doesn't make any sense. Your peripheral vision is to the side of your head, and even a full line of text is going to be pretty much right in front of you. When you're reading, when you're speed reading, you only use your central vision. You never use your peripheral vision. But there is some kind of truth to that. You need to kind of expand what you're looking at at a given time. What's happening right now, when you look at a word, and the words around it seem blurry, it's not that the words are blurry. Your eyes have more than enough resolution to pick up those words. What's actually happening is that your mind is deliberately blurring out those words to allow you to focus on that one word at a time. And so some of the exercises that we are going to do today and that you're going to practice over the next months are not going to be about changing anything in your eyes, but training your mind to stop deliberately blurring out these words. So your mind's going to stop blurring out words so that you can see more words at a time. In fact, you're already seeing those words at a time right now. We're just going to sort of consciously be able to see those words. Uh, if you look on the screen right now, you're going to see the word cat, and below it, an entire paragraph that, see, that takes up about the same amount of space. Which you'll see, it's very easy for you to, in one single look, see the entire word cat. But you can't do that with the paragraph. If you look at one word, what comes around it becomes blurry. And now you know that that's not something in your eyes. That's your brain deliberately blurring out what's going on over there. One of the things that people focus on a lot in speed reading is something called saccades, or saccadic movements.
Now you already know that what you see, or what it looks like you're seeing, isn't exactly what you're seeing. That what you really see is kind of a process cartoon version of the world. If you, when you read a line of text, it looks to you like you're just reading very, very smoothly. But in reality, your eyes are moving in these herky-jerky movements called saccades. That your eyes fixate on one word, and they kind of jerk to the next word, and they fixate there. And they jerk to the next word, and they fixate there. Uh, what speed reading pioneer Evelyn Woods showed is that through very simple exercises, you can actually reduce those psychotic movements and increase your reading speed. Okay, so this is the first drill. This is a classic Evelyn Woods drill. And it's going to be the prelude to some of the actual speed reading techniques we're going to use over here. The uh, technique is very simple. You just take a pen, your finger, whatever, and you're just going to go like this. And you're just going to kind of read along with the pen. You're going to use the pen to kind of keep your eyes moving. What you're going to see is that when you use this technique, uh, if you do it with a friend or something, you're going to see that the number of saccades or the saccadic movements decreases pretty substantially. But really why this is a beneficial drill is it's getting you ready for some of the more advanced drills. So just like that, you're just going to read along with the pen or your finger. You can do it like this. That's also fine. Whatever you want to do. And so do that for at least five or ten pages. Now the second drill, we're going to start to move a little bit more towards actual speed reading. Um, instead of having your pen go all the way from the left part of the line to the right part of the line, we're going to see if you can just focus, just have your pen move from here to here. And the idea is that your eyes are going to move from here to here, but you're still going to catch all this stuff, all of this stuff, because we're going to encourage the mind to stop blurring this text. So you're going to read basically, just go like this and just force your eyes to just go along with the pen and of course at the beginning they're going to kind of skip around they're going to try to glance over here don't worry about that let that happen and then just keep on going like this see I'm not going all the way from the left to the right I'm going from you know a little bit from like here-ish to here here to here just like this super easy super simple drill and again just like with the previous drill do this for at least five to ten pages. Now, for many people, this drill is going to be the first drill that's actually hard. If this drill is hard for you, practice this for at least a few days before continuing into the more advanced drills. Get comfortable with this drill. This is an important drill. So spend, if, if you're comfortable with it, do it just for you know a few minutes right now. If you're not comfortable with it, then you know just continue on just doing this for at least a few days until you're comfortable and able to actually read and actually understand what you're saying. This is a, this is a drill where you should be able to uh, understand what you're reading by, again, just going from here to here. Now, as you get more advanced with this drill, what you need to do is this. Instead of going from, say, here to here, you're just going to go from here to here. Just a little, you're going to move, be, be moving again and again, uh, kind of from, a, from this point. Instead of from here to here, you move from like maybe here to around here. So just like this. And what this is preparing you to do is to eventually start to be able to kind of read one line at a time. So instead of going from, remember we started like this, then we went from here, eventually going to go here, then eventually you're just going to really just be able to read like this. Just kind of just going down, your eyes are going to be taking in the whole line of text uh, at, a, at, a, at a single uh, look. Okay, now we're going to do really the drill that's going to form probably the first couple of months at least of your initial practice. Um, we're going to call this the two point drill and you're going to see why. Fold, just take any piece of paper and just fold it up into fourths. So you have it like this. And then you're going to do this exercise. Uh, if, you, if you look at this line, it says there is no real, there's no real linear way to do any of those. So here's what you're going to do. Uh, look, at the, look at the second word in the line. 
If while you're looking at the second word, you can still see the first word, good. Then move to the next word. Uh, if I'm looking at the word no, I can still see the word there, so I'm fine. Now let's say I get to the word linear, and now there is starting to get a little bit blurry. I'm going to put the first point here. Um, I'm going to go on the other side. Let's say if I'm looking at the word the uh, result, uh, the word the, I can still see the word result. If I'm looking at the word if, I can still see the word result. If I'm looking at the word even, now let's say it's starting to get blurry. So I'm going to put the second point here. And now what I'm going to do with my eyes when I read, I'm just going to look at the left point and then at the right point. And the idea is, remember, your, your eyes are seeing all of this, but your mind is artificially focusing, making you focus on a very small amount of text. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at this point, then this point, next line, this point, this point. And again, you're just going to look at the left point, then the right point. Left point, right point. Left point, right point. At first, you're going to have essentially zero comprehension. None of this is going to make any sense. You're not going to understand anything you're reading, and that's fine. Uh, that's why we're so you're going to practice this really for a while before any of uh, you, you even can understand just the most basic and rudimentary stuff. This is going to be very difficult and very disorienting for a quite a long period of time. But this is the most important training drill. This is going from two points. It's what's going to get you going to one point. So you know, to the left point, right point, left point, right point. Look here and look here. And the idea is, when you're doing that, it's like when you look at the left point, you're looking at kind of like the first half of the line. And when you look at the right point, you're looking at the second half of the line. So again, left point, right point. We can go on to a different page. So you're, let's say you're on this page. You're going to look at, you're, when you're looking here, again, you're glancing at this. When you're looking here, you're glancing at this. Now, what if you're someone like me when you're starting out, and this is just too hard for you? you the left point and right point, let's say that, um, that it's just, you know, you, even as soon as you get to the second word, the first word starts to be blurry. Well, there's nothing that says you have to limit this to two points. You can make this a three-point drill. Put one point here, here, and here.